Uh, look, um, as far as, uh, uh, you, you know, you, you correctly pointed out that the opposition is being churlish, but not just churlish. The Congress party and especially one of its leaders has made a career of uh, speaking negatively, not just about the Prime Minister or the BJP, but about India itself. Every achievement of India is doubted, questioned and uh, spun negatively. But as I said, these are the people that have been repeatedly rejected by the Indian electorate. And so this is their frustration speaking out. Uh, it's not based on anything uh, in reality. Now, you talked about, uh, I mean, Pavan talked about uh, the, the Prime Minister's immense popularity. You know, it's not just his view or my view. You know, just last week, uh, Pew, which is uh, the most trusted mm. polling agency around the world, uh, rated the Prime Minister's popularity rating at 80%. Now, that is astronomical. Uh, you know, that goes further than even Chandrayaan-3. Let me explain why. Because in democracies, uh, in developed countries, Leaders who have 40-45% popularity are considered very popular and their greatest aspirations are to go to 50-55% popularity. To have 80% popularity is just enormous and that is being put to good use. Now, uh, regarding China, uh, you know, the, the, basically there are hardly two or three countries that may f uh, feel a little jealous or unhappy about India's growth. But the vast majority of the nations around the world welcome India's rise as a, as a friendly force as a positive force. Now, coming to China, uh, you know, that China plus one strategy that Pavan was referring to, I think is already passe. That may have been useful a few years ago, but today China has, is, is facing uh, its own internal challenges. Its uh, demographics, its population has fallen off a cliff uh, for the first time in 50 years, having negative growth and very sharply negative now. The, their economy, which was the toast of the world for more than four decades, uh, seems to have run into a brick wall. Uh, they have uh, immense challenges of their own to deal with. And India is attracting enormous new investment and support. Uh, so I think we should take that in the positive spirit. And of course, uh, Navika, as we were talking, the days of being hyphenated with Pakistan is, is long gone. It's, uh, I mean, Pakistan and India occupy different universes today. So th that is no longer an issue. The issue is, uh, as we transition to a 5 trillion economy and a 10 trillion economy in the visible future, we should maintain this trajectory that the Prime Minister has established well. of building friendship and trust across the world and using it for the mutual good. Well, absolutely. Challenges will always remain. For any country as large as uh, India, there will be challenges. There will be challenges on the economic front. There will be challenges on the social front. There will be challenges on the political front. But when Pavan Verma says India is on the cusp of something great, many people in this country do believe this is the time for India. And India is demonstrating it. Brand India has arrived and Brand Modi is powering this big moment for India. How the G20 world leaders uh, actually look at this, what kind of agreements they reach, will possibly have the detail of how India can also broker peace and get agreements going. All eyes on that to happen tomorrow when the G20 goes on from tomorrow to day after tomorrow. We'll get on to that and bring you the latest on that. But thank you, Pavan Verma, and thank you, Jay Panda, for joining me on this very special session.